Mystic Ashram Channel presents Astrology Sabian Symbols Midnight New Year's Eve 2020 Astrological Sabian Symbol Visions through medium Elsie Wheeler channeled in 1925. These are Madame Wheeler's visions as translated and transcribed by Mark Edmund Jones providing a forecast based on the 360 degrees of a chart or a map of the sky at a specific time and place. A large group of pheasants. An image of long-tailed colorful birds. Pheasants are so called for being discovered by the Greeks near the river Phasis, which flows into the Black Sea, and perhaps also for their colorful appearance. The Greek of Phasis means show or appearance. Ring necked pheasants common to North America have wattled heads, a colored head, and neck of dark iridescent green, a red face, and a white ring around the neck associated with high aristocracy. The pheasants relates to giving oneself airs, pretentious and affected, affected manners. Associated with vulgar manners, a pheasant relates to bellowing, as in the Billingsgate pheasants, shouting fishermen trying to attract attention to and bend their fish. A table set for the evening meal. An image of preparedness for sharing the fruits of the day's labor. The evening meal is symbolic of both the time of day and the season of reaping the rewards of human endeavor and industry. Families gather to enjoy the fruits of the day's labor at the evening meal time. Associated with the direction west, the evening meal is a time of relaxed, smiling joy. A table set is a table all in readiness for the meal to begin, suggesting a gathering or company of people who will come to enjoy the meal together. Indians rowing a canoe and dancing a war dance. An image of a group working together for forward progress with an energizing preparation for a specific mission. A canoe is one of the most archaic of water vessels, originally a hollowed out tree trunk. The birch bark canoe of North American Indians is a much lighter craft which when handled with skilled efficiency is an excellent means to traverse shorter spans of water. A skilled team of rowers can maneuver a canoe to practically any place they wish to go, even against strong headwinds or currents by traversing a zigzag line. To portage literally means to carry one's vessel between two navigable waters. Dancing has long been recognized as an effective means to move the social dynamics of love further along, as well as a means to psych up warriors before battle. Dancing suggests lithe, graceful moves like those of a cat. Rhythmic dancing can evoke sexual energy like the clicking of a railroad track, the powerful swaying of the train traveling through the night. Dancing a war dance brings the warriors together in an immense felt union for a common purpose, like a team getting pumped before the big game. Two lovebirds singing on a fence is an image of winged creatures of affection in song on a barrier. Lovebirds belong to the parrot family, possess high intelligence and occasionally can be trained to talk. They are called lovebirds due to the apparent affection they express for their mates. Singing on a fence means literally sitting on a railing around an enclosed area while floating songs of buoyant joy and affection. The most common lovebird is known for its painted face. 
A fence can be an intentional obstacle controlling an area, keeping someone or something apart from someone or something else, a degree of separation. An audience is normally kept and removed from the actors on moving stages. Actors strut their stuff across the stage or float by on slow-moving ships decked in a spectacular array. Occasionally, an actor will engage the fourth wall, strip away the invisible barrier separating the performer from the audience in shared revelry. An affectionate couple may whistle and cheer appreciation for the sumptuous procession from an observation point suited for a commanding view. An Indian squaw pleading to the chief for the lives of her children is an image of a mother placed in an unbearable situation of having to plead for the lives of those she loves most. A plea is an earnest appeal or entreaty. The woman is being subjected to an extremely anguishing possibility. Pleading to the chief suggests entreating, imploring with great intensity the leader, king, judge, the one at the top by whom the verdict has been decided at the mere fall of a hammer. Perhaps one has been a victim of a hasty decision or the ruthless use of power that subjugates makes one subservient to another. An earnest entreaty places the matter on the table for the discussion. If the two parties are working together harmoniously, the position may be swayed to a more pleasing outcome if it please the court. The lives of the children can be placed as if on an altar, a table symbolic of elevated status as an offering to the divine. Imagine an Incan princess pleading to the chief while her children are being led to the sacrificial altar. Parents sacrifice much to raise their children, work to provide, encourage their growth, pray for their well-being. Relations between parents sometimes need to be patched up. Difficulties can lead to be throwing stones at one another. Sometimes it is all a bunch of cobble nonsense. What is chief in the matter is working together for some higher goal purpose for the sake of the challenge is to determine what is really important and of genuine worth a veiled prophet of power is an image of covered light that sees through divine eyes veiled is a covering usually a veil of cloth draped across the face or over the head if the light is overpowering, a protective veil may be required. Power is just power. It is neither good nor bad. What man brings to the expression of power colors its estimation. A prophet is regarded as a person who can interpret or channel the will, light, and power of the, the divine. A hierophant is one who shows or interprets esoteric or sacred mysteries. A hierophant may be seized by the energy of the divine in so much the same way that seizures may be induced by the influence of the full moon. When something else takes you over a higher power, an emotion, a sudden insight, it is as if one has been seized or possessed. One might be arrested by imagining obstacles in one's path to prosperity and comfort, or bring imagination to a situation to creatively see things in a different light. Look directly at the sun, looking directly at the sun can blind human eyes, a situation calling for a protective covering or a means to reflect safely on an intense overpowering reality. The veil between the worlds, like that between the fairy realm and the human reality, can at times be thin. It is a thin veil that also separates imagination and reality. The lunatic may be divinely inspired poet. The prophet may be a lunatic in disguise. 
A general accepting defeat gracefully is an image of a display of admirable character, acting in harmony with the prevailing winds. Grace appear, applies to movement as a harmony of motion, and is distinguished from beauty, which applies more to appearance. Defeat is to fail to accomplish, to be vanquished, to frustrate victory of one's purpose, to try or to attempt something ever admits of possible greater powers that lie in reserve to overcome human attempts. It may be maintained that to say I am is nobler than I tried, but the exultant glory of the moment of victory still bears a questionable transience when held up to a noble and graceful defeat. Wind since seems to wander aimlessly to change direction without apparent reason. A wand is a conductor's baton, the royal scepter, the magi magician's wand, the warrior's sword, is a slender stick used to canalize energy, to direct focused energy for human purposes. A general symbolically acknowledges defeat by surrendering his sword. Handing over one's sword symbol symbolizes relinquishing all intention of directing an attack, disarming conflict. Favoring winds can convey one to one's destination. Catching a fair wind requires having a sense of the right time to hoist the sail. Catching wind of something puts one on the alert, wakefully on guard like a sentinel for the winds of destiny. Steps up to a lawn blooming with clover. An image of a gradual approach to the atmosphere of a situation. Steps are a gradual progression of movement, usually of a short distance. Step down is a gradual decrease, as in converting the current of voltage to a lower voltage, as opposed to stepping the current up. A lawn blossoming with clover is a good pasture in luxuriant or prosperous condition. Clover is a flowering ground cover with a sweet smell and associated with luck, a four-leafed clover. Clove is an aromatic spice that, like cloves of garlic, can really punch up a meal. To cleave is to so something is to it, split it in two, or penetrate like a pungent smell, reeking of garlic, or automatically and pleasantly, aromatically and pleasantly spiced. Blooming is blossoming, suggesting a thriving, flourishing, unfolding of life. As a slang term, one might refer to a blooming fool, or intensify a matter as in Ask me no blooming questions, I'll tell you no blooming lies. An Easter promenade is an image of exhibiting oneself at a controlled pace within a social event inspired by feeling renewed or reborn. Easter is a Christian celebration of rebirth any time associated with the arousing, renewing energies of spring. A promenade is a casual stroll in an open social space. The promenade is at a walking pace, the word deriving from the Latin for promenare. To drive cattle forward. On a beautiful Easter Sunday afternoon, all walks of life come together dressed in their Sunday best. Rich and poor stroll along the promenade, casually enjoying the return of spring, watching and greeting one another. Imagine an artist recently inspired by a terrible but powerful muse. He goes out on Easter Sunday to see the entire community moving along like a herd of cattle, driven, as it were, by social niceties and pretensions of importance expressed mostly through apparel. He might rush into the crowd like an explosive madman, violently disturbing the peaceful scene. He might suppress the powerful, 
tormenting urges, recognizing an impending disaster of showing himself at an inappropriate place and time. He might flee back into the wilderness forest, just like a deep inner inflammation that rises to the surface as a hot, angry boil. The upsurge of raw personal powers cannot always be controlled. When the wild man, Orangutan, is freed from his cage, something in the human psyche, in the world, in the social world, has to give. Two awards for bravery in war is an image bestowing honor, reward, or recognition for courage displayed while at war, win or lose. Bravery is the display of courage in the face of danger, a resolve to follow through to the end, setting one's personal safety aside in favor of completing the task. A warrior sacrifices his personal well-being to get the mission done. Receiving awards after wartime service is not dependent upon having won the war. Individual displays of courage are recognized even if the war or mission was a failure. Ward means to watch, to guard. An award is a token of recognition deemed due or bestowed for actions or efforts in a contest of some kind. All contest is struggle. Agon is the name of the ancient Greek com competitions or games from which the Olympics derive. Agony is intense suffering of body or mind in the face of stiff competition or violent struggle. A general may receive awards even in defeat. A woman watches the horizon for a sailboat that may never appear, yet receives respect for her constancy in longing. A good book about bravery in war may be highly appreciated by a literary society. What is to be awarded, to be recognized and appreciated, is not immune to special interests with a common purchase to vouchsafe those interests. Awards, like swords, can have two edges. A tiny nude miss reaching into the water for a fish is an image of guileless innocence attempting to grasp what is elusive. A tiny nude miss is a young unmarried girl or woman without any clothing suggesting one without guise. Reaching into the water for a fish is an act that attempts to grasp what is slippery. Getting a hold on a fish is especially difficult since the actual position of the fish is distorted by the refraction of light as it passes from the element of wa air into water. The fish is not where it appears to be. Fishing for something, a compliment, the truth, is an attempt to find indirectly what one seeks. A Roman fable tells of truth and falsehood bathing. Falsehood came out of the water first and dressed herself up in truth's garments. Unwilling to wear the clothes of falsehood left behind, truth went naked, nudus veritas. An angel carrying a harp is an image of sublimely beautiful and innocent messenger bearing a triangular stringed instrument. Angels are the attendant spirits that may guard and protect or are the bearers of something, the angel of death, the angel of mercy. A harp is a triangular str shaped stringed instrument that is plucked by the hand held in a claw-like fashion. Lyra is a constellation containing the bright star of Vega, the falling vulture, and the ring nebula a cloak-like surrounding cloud. Lyra is named for the lyre, invented by Hermes, the messenger god. A harpy is a winged woman or a bird with a woman's face. From Greek mythology, harpies are rapacious monsters who seize victims in their talons carrying off the souls of the dead. Not to harp on the matter, but a winged woman with talons tend to grab one's attention. Talons are sharp, slender, pointed projections of a bird's claw. A tine is a small, 
slender projection of a larger thing such as a pork or a barb on a hook. Getting your hooks into the mouth of an angel, angelfish is a hit or miss proposition. One might harpoon a whale or harp on a story about the one that got away. What is being transported or conveyed is not necessarily what is being reached for. Having the pluck to reach for what you seek meets the clouded uncertainty of what is born to you. Free of ulterior motive, one's reach is often rewarded in unexpected ways. All one has to do is reach. Apply this degree pair with a mind to the challenge of innocently reaching into the realms of powerful potentials, of discriminating between sublime messages and pointed barbs. Look for tiny pointed instruments, stringed instruments, angelic affinities, a tendency to harp on about something. Watch for naked honesty and the refusal to wear falsehoods of clothes. Consider triangular shapes, clouds of confusion, attempts to shroud the truth that miss lyrical voices or sensibilities. What you seize upon may be sublime good fortune or a storm cloud with which you are carried away. Your views and comments matter. Thank you so much for watching and tuning in and sharing and liking and subscribing and being here at the ashram with us. This has been Sabian Summer News with Mystic Ashram Net. Thanks so much for watching.